fingers and don't touch those two buttons. Okay. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, thank you very much for the invitation here in Nanog. Uh, I can say that it's my first time. Now, introducing uh, my name, I remember the funny story. Uh, I came here in Washington on Sunday, and after walking around uh, for some time, finally uh, managed to reach my hotel. I get in, and I went to reception, and hello, my name is Jos Nomikos. And suddenly, the man behind the reception changed his behavior and asking, who are you? What are you doing here? Why are you here? And something like that. And uh, afterwards, I realized that saying my name, Jos Nomikos, uh, uh, he understood that my name is Nomigost. <laughs> Anyway, let's go. Uh, uh, I will present uh, a recent work um, conducted uh, with uh, Xenophodas Dimitropoulos uh, in fourth. There I'm a research engineer, and fourth is a research foundation in Greece. It numbers about uh, 1,000 people there. And it's about a tool uh, on how to detect IXPs in treasured paths. And the name of this tool is Trakes Out. No. <laughs> okay. Let me ask you something. How many of you, uh, you use Trace Route? Please raise your hand. Awesome. Let me ask you something else. Why it is important to know if uh, trace route paths cross an IXP? Or why it is important to know, uh, in general, if our traffic goes through an internet exchange point. A potential answer to that question is that maybe it offers much more transparency over where our packets go. Uh, might be considered quite useful for networking administrators to troubleshoot end-to-end -end paths, or even for researchers to better understand how the IXP ecosystem evolves. Unfortunately, uh, based on the literature, we cannot be pretty sure that we have crossed uh, an IXP, stumbling on an IXP IP in the trace route path and having as information in our hands only IXP prefixes. And uh, this could happen due to different reasons. For instance, due to third party IPs. Uh, for, in for instance, assume here that we have uh, an example of uh, a layer 2 IXP topology with two IXP members in the borders. And the trace route path, as you notice, with a dotted line that crosses the border router B. If this uh, border router B replies with a third party IP that belongs to the IXP subnet, then it's possible to force infer that we have crossed the IXP fabric, but in fact we didn't, as you can notice with a dust line. Some other reasons might be inaccuracies uh, in the IXP prefix data. And what about if these prefixes are used in other operational subnets? So uh, in this uh, work, we propose a new tool, uh, Trace Route, on how to detect and identify if and at which hops in the trace route path we have crossed an internet exchange point. We deployed this tool in Python 3. Of course, it's open source, so everyone can contribute. It's licensed under GPL version 3. And we announced the first release uh, in May last year, directly after our publication in, in PAM conference. And the good news, uh, last week we also announced uh, the last version of the tool. Uh, what are the key features of Trex Route? Trace route is a general purpose tool uh, that, uh, in which we can detect there with that tool uh, the crossing links on the fly. This means that we don't need a bunch of uh, trace route paths in order to infer with high confidence this crossing, but only with one trace route path we, can, we, can, we could have, we have uh, this result. 
And this fact also, I, also uh, allow us to have fast high speed detection. Uh, we tried to focus only in, uh, on easy accessible data, easily accessible high speed data. And this is something that allows us to overcome some of the existing shortcomings. Uh, also, TrexRoute uh, supports direct communication with the RIPE Atlas infrastructure. Uh, this means that through the tool, uh, you can create or even fetch uh, measurements from the RIPE Atlas database in order to analyze them and then to see where you have uh, an IXP crossing or possible IXP crossings, uh, IXP crossing in the interested paths. Uh, most importantly, in the last major revision of our tool, uh, we also added a, a new functionality. Actually, TrexRoute uh, supports remote peering identification. This means that after we have detected an IXP crossing, we can also infer if the near end IXP member is also a remote peer. This uh, functionality is mainly based on data from um, a new tool, uh, the name of which is uh, Remote Peering Jedi Tool. Uh, this tool uh, actually uh, initially emerged and finally deployed uh, during IXP Hackathon uh, in the last RIPE meeting. And in that tool also some of our colleagues are also in involved. And uh, the capability of this tool is to uh, detect and geolocate uh, the remote peerings in the IXPs. Finally, we follow the modular design, and this is something that allows us to uh, easily extend the tool with new IXP detection capabilities. And of course, it offers flexibilities to the users to configure the tool based on their needs. As I said before, we follow the modular design. Uh, here you can see the four main modules. In the first module, we have uh, in, the in the first module, we have the initialization of the tool with some input data. In the second, we try to receive an IP path sending a probe. In the third module, which is the most important module for us, uh, we have deployed our methodology in, uh, in order to take the, the big decision where and if we have uh, an IXP crossing. And uh, finally, in the fourth module, we try to formulate all the output of the tool. So in the first module, as I said, we have the initialization with some input data. For this reason, we used three kinds of data sets, uh, IXP membership data and IXP prefixes provided by KEDA, sorry, provided by PeeringDB and uh, Packet Clearing House. And as a third data set, we used prefix to AS mappings provided by KEDA based on route use uh, BGB dumps. At this point, it's worth mentioning that the first data set was the most important data set for us for two reasons. Firstly, because it offers fine granular, granular information that associates uh, IXP IPs to IXP members. And secondly, never used from uh, previous works for this purpose. As a result, we try to validate the accuracy of, of uh, this data. Uh, to remember, PeeringDB is a, is a database with self-reported data from IXPs and ISPs too. And uh, Packet Clearing House is another database, database uh, that contains information, of course, IXP related. And in, it retrieves all this data from BGB dumps, from route collectors located into IXPs. So we also used these BGB dumps, and we managed to validate the accuracy of the 93% of the IXP membership data from PeeringDB and the 92% for from uh, Packet Learning House, respectively. Now, in the second module, of course, of course, is a SIM module. We try to receive an IP path, sending a probe for a selected destination, IP des destination or a URL, whatever, and. To do that, we can use either uh, the well-known traceroute or Scamper. Scamper is another uh, more sophisticated tool provided by KEDA. Implements Paris traceroute, uh, so this allows us to overcome some anomalies in the path uh, due to load balancing. 
And now in the third module, um, in which we have deployed our methodology, you notice that it consists of three main steps. So to better understand how all this process and uh, works, let's see some more details for each step. For each step. Uh, particularly, in the first step, we try to find an IXP IP in the path based on IXP membership and prefixes data. Uh, and how we do that? Assume that we have a sample of a trace route path from the second module. And the first thing that we have to do here is to use a sliding window, hop window, of size two or three IPs. Let's say, for our example, that we have set it to, to size of three. Now, for each hop window, we apply our methodology. We check, it, we check for IXP crossings. We slide the window. Again, we reapply methodology. We infer our result, and so on. So assume that again that we have a sample of a hop window of the trace route path. So the first thing that we have to do here is to check if the, uh, if the middle IP is an IXP IP. And how we do that? We check if this IP is included in the IXP membership data or belongs to an IXP prefix. Let's say that we have a hit for our example. Now, in the second step, we translate the IP path to an AS path, and then we check if the, uh, the AS's adjacent to the IXP IP are also members to that IXP. Having this uh, hope window from the previous step, we map the border IPs to AS numbers based on prefix to AS mappings, and then uh, we check if this AESs are members to the candidate IXP that we have in the middle using the IXP membership data. And now, in the third step, we take the final decision, gathering all the information from the previous uh, steps. We are ready to say if and at which hope in the trace route path, path uh, we have this IXP crossing. Of course, taking into account our methodology, you noticed that uh, to infer these uh, this crossing links, we have to do two main things. The first thing uh, is to check what information we have and also what requirements are satisfied. So, uh, for this reason, uh, we formulated various IXP detection rules and we split them into two groups, in strong and weak evidence rules. To better understand uh, what are about these rules, let's see some uh, examples. Consider again that we have a sample of a hop window with an IXP IP in the middle. So, a strong evidence rule requires AS information for all the three IPs, and especially for the middle one based on IXP membership data. And if the border ASs are members to the IXP, with the first two AS numbers to be different, we can say that this rule is satisfied, and then we infer that we have crossed an IXP in the first hop of uh, the hop window. I mean, in other words, before the IXP IP. A weak evidence rule does not uh, require AS um, information for all the three IPs. And also for the third one, not to be member to the IXP. Again, if uh, this rule is satisfied, we can say that we have crossed the IXP. But of course, now we claim this result with lower evidence. And now, in the fourth module, collecting all uh, the information from the previous steps and modules, we try to formulate, uh, and of course, after the path analysis, we try to formulate uh, the output of the tool. And running this, uh, tracks, as an example, this tracks route command and enabling some arguments, um, the first thing that the tool can print is a short dialogue about what information we keep 
in our database in order to make all the path analysis. And then we print the, the candidate trace route path, augment it with some AS, uh, with some AS, AS based information, with some detected IXP IPs. But uh, most importantly, at the bottom, we have all the IXP crossing links and, uh, of course, the inferred remote peering links uh, for the uh, detected IXP for the candidate trace route path. Now, uh, as a next step, we try to see what else we can learn from IXPs and trace route paths. And uh, for this reason, we used uh, 30 million probes provided by CADA, and we applied onto these paths uh, 16 value different IXP detection rules. And our results show that we don't, we, we, our results show that in um, about 20% of these paths, we have IXP crossings. We don't see usually more than one IXP crossing link. And these IXP crossing links uh, happen on average at the middle of the paths. So to wrap up, Trace Route is a tool uh, to detect and identify if and at which hope we have IXP crossing links in Trace Route paths. We offer fast and on the fly IXP detection. Uh, Trace route uh, supports uh, remote peering identification and direct communication with uh, the RIP Atlas database. And at this point, it's worth mentioning that Trace route also supports a generic Trace route path format. Uh, this means that you can import every path from every database after a proper conversion in order to analyze it. And then uh, we hope to offer a better level of transparency uh, and uh, a more effective way to troubleshoot end to end path. So for this reason, uh, for these reasons actually, uh, we hope this tool to be useful in the networking community. Now, as a future work, we still plan uh, to support IPv6. Uh, we need uh, further ground truth information to, f to validate this tool. And of course, we plan to uh, include uh, additional uh, information from other databases and to integrate some more mechanisms in order to offer a better level of accuracy and, of course, uh, more functionalities to the users. So this is Trix Route, a work uh, funded by the ERC NetVolution project. Uh, thanks a lot. Thank you very much.